starts with 2,000 welds to build an aluminum space frame, each done by hand. You need the right skill and the right feeling. Leather hides are cut with laser precision, and only the best will do. It must feel right, it must have the right touch, it must have the right smell. Absolutely perfect piece of leather. Exotic woods are sculpted into automotive showpieces. The art of the bookmatcher comes to life. Stately beauty is matched by stunning brawn from a potent V12 powerhouse. It's just like being on the magic carpet. Rolls-Royce is more than just the world's ultimate luxury car. For the British, it's a source of national pride. Everything has to be first class. There's only one place you'll find all this. The ultimate luxury car factory of Rolls-Royce motor cars. The Rolls-Royce Phantom could have been named the Phoenix, as it represents the rebirth of the legendary motor car manufacturer in spectacular 21st century fashion. Not only does it have all the traditionally regal finishes you'd expect, a sumptuous interior wrapped in luxurious A-grade European leather, more polished wood than the average dining room, and the legendary Whisper Quiet Ride. But it also offers state-of-the-art technological goodies, like a fiber-optic illuminated starlight headliner. A 15-speaker, 9-channel, 420-watt, commercial-grade Lexicon sound system. A shift-by-wire, 6-speed automatic transmission. And lots, lots more. The Double R Motor Car brand has been revived with a transfusion of high technology by current owners BMW. Still the Phantom manages to remain as British as the umbrellas built into its doors. That's right, every car comes with Teflon-coated hideaway umbrellas that pop out with the touch of a button. You've got the comfort from inside with the leathers and the woods, which are not only comfortable, but beautifully handcrafted. That's really what makes it the finest car in the world. But don't let its restrained aristocratic exterior fool you. Within this regal beauty beats the heart of an asphalt-eating beast. A mammoth V12 capable of hauling this two and a half ton Colossus from zero to 60 in just 5.7 seconds. That's sports car acceleration territory. A new Phantom owner like Chuck Kavitsky will tell you, this is definitely not your grandfather's Rolls-Mobile. Rolls-Royce means exceptional quality, classic beauty, surprising performance. It is the best, it is simply the best. To build this old world, new world tour de force requires the fabricating finesse of three ultimate factories in two countries. Goodwood, England is home to the award-winning state-of-the-art Rolls-Royce factory. Here, a legion of craftspeople hand builds each car to order. It's a process that takes at least two months to complete for each car. In Dingolfing, Germany, the Phantom's aluminum and steel body gets a corrosion protection treatment. But every Phantom gets its start in Unterhallerau, Germany. Here, over 200 sections of extruded aluminum and 300 alloy parts are melted and welded to form the car's super strong space frame and body. To begin, welders place the aluminum sections in fixtures that hold the parts in near perfect alignment. Each fixture provides a custom platform for building a specific part of the space frame. Welded entirely by hand, the Phantom's body is the largest all-aluminum space frame car chassis ever made. 
Using aluminum rather than steel saves the Phantom hundreds of pounds of weight and makes its chassis stiffer than a Formula One car. But it also makes this space frame very challenging to build. It's complex because uh, when you weld parts together, uh, aluminum parts together, you always get distortion. It must be absolutely perfect. So it's important to have people who have feeling for the material. The challenge with welding aluminum is this. Move too fast, the weld can fail when it cools. But weld too slowly, and you risk burning right through the metal, destroying the part. For welding aluminum, you need the right skill and the right feeling. If you teach 100 people aluminum welding, 10 out of 100 will be able to manage that. When all 2,000 welds are done correctly, the result is a remarkably strong and stiff superstructure. It would take four tons of force to bend a one meter section by just one degree. Now, a transformative moment, the attachment of the body panels. The use of aluminum keeps the body weight down to just 1,200 pounds, 500 pounds lighter than its nearest rival. The most critical procedure is welding on the roof structure. First, they lift the enormous aluminum roof panel into place. In order to prevent the welding heat from distorting the aluminum roof, a team of two metal workers must weld both sides of the roof in complete unison. The two metal workers must begin and end their welds at precisely the same time, without stopping. This simultaneous procedure equalizes the impact of the welding process across the roof and avoids distortion. This 16-inch weld is one of the longest continual aluminum welds in the auto industry and only six out of 150 workers here are capable of doing it. Unfortunately, the long weld leaves a long, ugly seam. But just wait till this craftsman gets finished with it. He'll file and sand it until it's as smooth as glass. The same care is taken when attaching the rest of the Phantom's body panels. In some factories, it takes less than an hour to build an entire car. Here, it may take up to an hour just to fit one section. Technicians measure and re-measure every gap and fitting, making minute adjustments until everything fits perfectly. When all of the body sections are installed, the car is referred to as a body in white. This term is a throwback to the early days of the auto industry, when car bodies were first painted with white primer. This unrelenting attention to detail has been a standard practice at Rolls-Royce since the very beginning of the company. In 1903, a little-known but brilliant engineer named Henry Royce bought his first car. Dissatisfied with the quality of its construction, he decided to build his own. The car was so good that Royce soon came to the attention of Charles Rolls, the owner of a successful auto dealership in London. The two teamed up with one aim, build the very best cars. They were after excellence. That is borne out by the fact that something like 65% of the products of Rolls-Royce motor cars are still on the road. And there's no other manufacturer in the world that can boast anywhere near that percentage. In 1906, Rolls-Royce introduced a car that would become an automotive legend, known as the Silver Ghost. After a record-breaking 15,000-mile non-stop endurance run, it earned the reputation as the best car in the world. Over 7,000 of the legendary cars were built, and they became the foundation of the company's success. The Silver Ghost was a totally outstanding car. It was very well designed and it was very durable, and, uh, and this enabled it to do what it did. It was a marvelous thing. 
um, from 1907 to 1925. It really was the top luxury car in the world. The Rolls-Royce motor car division flourished, becoming the conveyance of choice for dignitaries and celebrities. In 1980, it was acquired by the British conglomerate Vickers. It soon became clear, however, the grand old brand needed a new lease on life. They found it in 1998 with new owners, BMW. BMW built a new dedicated Rolls-Royce factory in Goodwood, England, with one aim, build the most luxurious handcrafted car on the market today, marrying old world craftsmanship with new technology. The Phantom, introduced in 2003, is the first incarnation of the new generation of Rolls-Royce motor cars. Phantom is an expression of what is expected of a Rolls-Royce. First of all, it has to have presence. Um, secondly, it has to have a performance which is more than adequate. But it has to do that in a very refined way. Dingolfing, Germany. A Finnish phantom body in white has arrived from nearby Unterhalerau. The metal frame and body needs a protective coating to help prevent rust and corrosion. It's a multi-step process called electrocoating or e-coating. The Phantom rides an articulating conveyor mechanism called a Rodip. That's a cross between a car wash and a carnival ride. The car is submerged into a series of seven chemical baths while the conveyor pivots the body up to 360 degrees to guarantee an even coat inside and out. The road dip facility is longer than three football fields, and it takes 45 minutes for each car to pass through it. The baths of nickel, manganese, and zinc phosphate clean and degrease the body and add a base layer of corrosion protection prior to painting. Then comes the actual e-coating. The car is given a DC electrical charge and plunged into a vat containing oppositely charged primer paint. Like metal to a magnet, paint solids in the bath adhere to the metal body. Eventually, every inch of the car, inside and out, is coated with a layer of corrosion-preventing primer paint. The conveyor belt then moves the body in white into an oven where it bakes at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 70 minutes, hard bonding the e-coat to the metal. The new Phantom is now ready for transport to the UK to become a Rolls-Royce motor car. I just need to get in touch with my uh, zone leader and, yeah. and change this one. Once he has a flawless grill, the technician installs and tests the iconic hood ornament. The main assembly line, 11 stations of handcrafted excellence. Here, the car starts as a painted body shell in station one and is driven off the line as a complete and running motor car at station 11. The Phantom comes in four models. The original four-door sedan or saloon. Next, the extended wheelbase Phantom, which boasts about 10 extra inches of rear seat legroom. There's a two-door convertible dubbed the Drophead Coupe, followed most recently by a hardtop two-door or coupe model. All four Phantom models are built on the same line at the same time, each customized to order. Called the Bespoke Program, the options are limitless. Rolls-Royce will custom build anything, from a personalized glove box humidor to an entire champagne picnic set built into the trunk. 80% of our cars are bespoke uh, to a greater or lesser extent. And that's exactly the appeal to the client, that he's getting something that's exclusive, it's his or hers, it's very personal. And yes, it's very expensive, but they 
they love it. They really enjoy the experience of building the car with us. The buying of a car like a Rolls Royce is an emotional experience. You're getting a chance to pick so many different things out. You're, you're getting the exact colors you want. You're getting the patterns you want. Once the bespoke designers develop an idea to a point of high detail, their drawings and sketches are converted into a digital 3D model. That data can be used for customer review and also to determine the feasibility of the design. We need to make sure that these will function in a true um, car environment. If we're looking here, we can sort of see a fridge unit. Um, and within there, we're able to package three sort of standard bottles of uh, champagne. And it's a package which we should be able to drop into the vehicle with minimal change and cost. Because of the typical longevity of a Rolls Royce, any device installed in a customer's car needs to be built to last for a long time. It does dawn on you that this car could quite easily outlive me, no problem. You're making history, it's no question, uh, with these cars. Uh, that's why we have to be very focused on delivering uh, the quality aspect that it is, does still meet the Rolls-Royce standard. To ensure the proper build-out of so many custom cars, each vehicle has a unique identification number and paperwork that indicates the specific options that go with it. At the first station on the assembly line, the focus is on ensuring that each Phantom will be capable of the whisper-quiet ride Rolls-Royce is famous for. Associates install blocks of high-density foam insulation to prevent low-frequency noise, like the rumble of tires on rough pavement. They also apply strips of thin soundproofing material made with foil-covered bitumen, a dense tar-like substance to help diminish high-frequency annoyances such as squeaks, rattles, and wind noise. Both of these components are applied to the body of the car before the wiring harness and before the carpet goes in, so obviously out of sight, out of mind, but keeps the car nice and quiet for the occupant. Along with the sound-deadening material, Technicians install two massive subwoofers into resonance chambers located beneath an ingenious double-deck floor. Next, at Station 2, technicians snake the wiring harness through the chassis like a giant python. Over a mile of wiring inside the harness powers and controls all of the car's electronic components. They also install speakers for the professional quality 15-speaker Lexicon sound system. Station 3. If it's a convertible, the Phantom will have its massive folding roof mechanism installed at this station. It weighs close to 200 pounds, so the assemblers use a weight-assisting fixture to maneuver it into position. They must make sure the mechanism is perfectly aligned so that it will seat properly inside the vehicle. Then, they bolt on the teak tonneau cover and adjust it for perfect alignment. Station 4. Here, technicians install the instrument panel. It is a super strong, super stiff, one-piece cradle of cast magnesium. Weighing just 15 pounds, it's one of the most complex castings ever used in a car. It's made in one piece for a very good reason. Historically, with the automotive manufacturing, this is normally where you would get squeaks and rattles because there's so many small components going together. This has been eliminated here at Rolls-Royce through the use of such a, a large uh, alloy casting uh, for the dashboard. Once the instrument panel is installed, the rest of the Phantom's wood parts can be fitted. Beautifully handcrafted woodwork has been a hallmark of Rolls-Royce interiors since the beginning. Many of the Phantom's interior components are clad with a lustrous laminated wood veneer. In fact, there are 42 wood-covered parts in the standard Phantom interior. And they're made right here in the Rolls-Royce wood shop. It takes about one month to produce a full set. 
A single armrest can require days of cutting, milling, manipulating, and fusing multiple varieties of wood with the workmanship of a piece of fine furniture. Rolls-Royce is, is also about uh, craftsmanship, and so inevitably there's a lot of man hours that go into making sure that we have a, a really high quality piece of, um, of furniture in the car. The wood shop offers a wide variety of species from around the world, including rosewood, walnut, ash, and elm. Of course, with the bespoke program, the options are pretty much limitless. Wood naturally contains intricate and beautiful patterns of fiber called grain. In the Phantom's interior, the grain is symmetrically mirrored through the center of the instrument panel. What that means is that the grain of the woodwork on the right side of the car matches that on the left. To achieve this effect, alternating slices of veneer are flipped over to face each other in a technique known as book matching. It's called book matching because what we are basically doing is taking two leaves, opening them, opening them up so that they match, so that you have like a mirror effect, like a but butterfly effect. But it's called a book match because you're basically opening a book. As you go along. The craftsman aligns each slice of veneer so the grain matches perfectly. If anything is slightly out, we will overlap it, so, and then we will cut it using a scalpel and a straight edge. Now, as you can see, where we've manipulated it, these knots now line up, this end lines up, and the central lines up, so you get a perfect match throughout the whole piece. Book matching not only keeps the interior wood cladding symmetrical, it can also create some interesting visual effects. The art of the bookmatcher comes to life. A face. The wood specialist hand sand each part until it's as smooth as silk. The veneer part set for each car is then sent out to be covered in six coats of high-gloss lacquer. When they come back, the wood specialists polish each part to a flawless shine and then attach them to the car's interior components. Finally, the wood-covered parts are delivered to Station 5 on the assembly line, where the technicians install them, making sure they don't get scratched in the process. You have to be very careful fitting the wood parts. You only have one opportunity to fit that part without damaging the wood. It's a lot of rework to, to take it out and get the wood redone, uh, and that obviously holds up production. It can't be helped. Parts get scratched, and they get marked, so Steve has to just repair it. But there's enough lacquer on it, he can rub it down, rub out the uh, scratches, and then he'll take it over to the polishing booth and repolish it. It's time for the Phantom to get its brawn on. At Station 6, two technicians attach the Phantom's prodigious powertrain to the chassis. The powertrain is uniquely developed by our parent company, 4 Rolls Royce. It's a 6.75 litre V12. It develops a 453 horsepower. It's got a very flat torque curve to produce what uh, Rolls-Royce term waftability. The remarkably compact all-aluminum V12 engine is designed to deliver low-end torque rather than screaming top-end speed. Low-end torque is the power to get a heavy vehicle up and going without any sensation of strain. To accomplish this, Rolls-Royce uses direct fuel injection in which each cylinder is fed a precise quantity of fuel, making it more efficient and powerful. Low-end torque allows the massive car, in most cases, to pull away from a stop in second gear, which adds to the feeling of effortless acceleration, or wafting, as Rolls-Royce calls it. Uh, the acceleration is awesome, you know, for such a heavy-weighted car. It's just like being on the magic carpet. Back on the assembly line, Two technicians put together the powertrain on a motorized carrier called a mat. Motorized hoists help with the heavy lifting. 
The axles go on first, rear and front. Next, the technicians bolt the Phantom's automatic transmission to the gargantuan engine. Once that's bolted into place, all that's left is the prop shaft. Next, a motor-driven sled moves the powertrain underneath the elevated Phantom body and then lifts the massive assembly into perfect position. This procedure is called a marriage. Now the technicians fasten everything into place, making sure that every bolt is tightened to the correct torque. A typical marriage takes around an hour and a half to complete. Once the marriage takes place, the car can be fitted with more of its finery, such as the classic grill. I'm checking that all gaps are grilled to the bonnet and bottom, and that gap here. On the top, it have to be, be four mil. That is a very nice gap. Looks very smart. Everything looks very nice, so it's finished. In keeping with the hand-built process, workers at Station 8 are manually installing the car's windows, a process called glazing. Normally at a high volume plant it's automated and a robot cell would, would uh, glaze front glass and rear glass in a matter of seconds. A special gun helps the installer apply just the right volume of mastic sealer around the window. The two installers then use a device known as a weight assister to lift and set the windshield. Once the car's exterior is finished, it's ready for its sumptuous upholstery. The factory's own leather shop makes all of the upholstery for each car. The 60 or so craftspeople who work here combine high technology with human expertise to achieve results that meet the Rolls-Royce standard. Well, the thing about the Phantom is it's all about the quality that we put into the car. And the quality must start with the raw materials. If we don't have the right raw materials, then nothing else will follow. A Phantom interior requires an average of 90 square feet or 18 half hides of natural grain leather. It will take the leather shop craftspeople 17 days to complete a fully upholstered interior. There are 15 colors in the standard palette, although Rolls-Royce can reproduce any color upon request. What we see here is only a small subset of all of the colors that are available for the Rolls-Royce customer. Uh, there's so many colors on the palette, that whether they're normal colors or bespoke colors, we can't have them all in-house at the same time. So we just have to have a subset of the colors that we need for that production. All of the upholstery in a Phantom starts out like this, a solid piece of tanned leather. First, an inspector checks each piece meticulously, looking for changes in grain or blemishes, which may affect the uniform look of the upholstery. Using a wax pencil, he carefully marks each imperfection. We're looking for uh, little bite marks, scars, just sort of as you rub your hand, sort of feeling for little bits that are sticking up, which you can mark. The technician who cuts the 450 individual leather pieces used in each Phantom starts by guiding a laser projection of each piece over an appropriate section of the hide. The trick? Avoid any imperfections. One of the largest panels that we cut is across the uh, instrument panel, so it's directly in the customer's eye line, and that part has to be absolutely perfect. So no scars, no mosquito bites, absolutely perfect piece of leather. Next, technicians lay out the hide on a cutting table. A vacuum pulls the leather down to prevent it from moving. And then the laser-guided, computer-controlled, self-sharpening, reciprocating blade 
trims it at 56,000 incisions per minute. Once the pieces have been cut, sewing machinists begin the painstaking job of stitching the leather panels together. The most critical part of the job is the top stitching, the stitches that are visible. It's extremely difficult to keep the stitches perfectly even around the corners. And one of the most crucial panels is the one directly in front of the driver, the dashboard. The most important thing is the, the stitch line, so it looks exactly straight, which is a extremely difficult you can see so the attention to detail to get that seam looking right by eye it, it's never hundred percent perfect because it is handmade many of the leather pieces are glued to a thin layer of foam that cushions the underlying component and the dashboard that Paul is doing is one of the main features of the car from our trim point of view it's obviously the, the focal point it still takes a few months learning to, to get the quality correct for, for Rolls Royce standard so this is, is a real Real top job the Paul's doing here. The seats are not only upholstered here, but they are handmade here as well. This is an RO1 Phantom seat, so the guys are, are fitting the first stage of the cover. These covers are, are very tight, so in this particular operation, you can see two, two guys need to do this part of it. This seam has to line up with the backboard, so it's, it's most important to get it in exactly the right place. Before the seats are sent to the assembly line, a technician tests them in a soundproof booth to make sure they don't squeak or rattle. At station number nine, assembly line associates install the Phantom's plush seats. A single worker can position the seats unaided thanks to another weight assister. When a Phantom reaches station 10, it's filled with all the necessary fluids and it's almost ready to roll. But not before it receives one last traditional Rolls Royce touch. The Phantom is ready for a traditional Rolls-Royce finishing touch. The Coach Line. The Coach Line is a contrasting pinstripe along the shoulder of the car. There are no machines or robots used to paint the Coach Line on a Rolls-Royce. Although you might wonder about painter Mark Court when you see him do what he does, he paints each and every Coach Line himself freehand. I am the only one that can do this. There is no one else here that can do this. It was just a case of developing a technique to do a car. What's Mark's secret to painting a straight line? Fine French chalk. If I don't put this French chalk on here, my fingers just stick, and then you can't get a smooth line. It takes three painstaking hours to paint each line. Over the years, I record every car that's done. I know every car that's gone out, where it's gone, and the only thing I don't know is who owns it. I'm the only one that can do this, and they are all mine. At Station 11, the wheels are mounted. The engine is fired up, and the Phantom is driven off the line. But it's not finished yet, not by a long shot. At this point, the quality control team is just getting started. Before it goes anywhere, each new Phantom must pass a battery of tests. The water test is used to make sure the passenger, luggage, and engine compartments are all watertight. The testers subject the car to a 20-minute soaking from 73 high-pressure water jets. The test is actually to simulate a monsoon. A 
mean, we're pretty confident if it passes this test, we're not going to see a problem with the customer. As part of the water test, a technician uses an endoscope to make sure there isn't any water leaking into the body panels. The car looks good on this side so far. In the computer-controlled shaker rig, hydraulic rams shake the rig's posts, which in turn pummel the suspension. Just missing front is just having squeaks and rattles. During the rolling road test, evaluators run the car up to 75 miles per hour to ensure that the main systems on the car are working properly. Finally, no car is ever released to a customer or shipped off for delivery until it is thoroughly road tested. The suspension setup um, actually allows it to just glide along the road. Obviously all potholes and cracks within the road are just absorbed and you actually don't feel it. It's, it makes it a very pleasurable driving experience. After the car has passed all the tests and deemed to be as perfect as possible, it makes it to the finish line where it's finally finished, ready for the customer. It takes an average of six months for a customer like Chuck Kavitsky to receive the Phantom that they order. But to Chuck, that's just a drop in the bucket. He's been waiting for this car his entire life. It all started back in the 60s when he saw a Rolls Royce on TV. It was car lust at first sight. I literally said I'd like to get one of those one day, so when I, when I grow up, I want one. Well, Chuck is definitely grown up, and he has fulfilled a lifelong dream to own the ultimate luxury car. And it wasn't just having a Rolls Royce, by the way. It was a particular Rolls Royce, which was a Rolls Royce with a convertible top. To me, that was going to be the ultimate. For me, it frankly means getting out in the car, having the top down, and just enjoying the heck out of the day. So I look at this as, uh, you know, this was something that was meant to be. It is the best, it is simply the best. Today's Rolls-Royce Phantom is a matchless mixture of a century of British tradition infused with the very best engineering. Its manufacturer requires the skill and precision of hundreds of exceptional craftspeople in three ultimate factories across two countries. The car looks good on this side so far. In the computer-controlled shaker rig, hydraulic rams shake the rig's posts, which in turn pummel the suspension. Just missing front, you're just having squeaks and rattles. During the rolling road test, evaluators run the car up to 75 miles per hour to ensure that the main systems on the car are working properly. Finally, no car is ever released to a customer or shipped off for delivery until it is thoroughly road tested. The suspension setup um, actually allows it to just glide along the road. Obviously all potholes and cracks within the road are just absorbed and you actually don't feel it. It's, it makes it a very pleasurable driving experience. After the car has passed all the tests and deemed to be as perfect as possible, it makes it to the finish line, where it's finally finished, ready for the customer. It takes an average of six months for a customer like Chuck Kavitsky to receive the Phantom that they order. But to Chuck, that's just a drop in the bucket. 
he's been waiting for this car his entire life. It all started back in the 60s when he saw a Rolls Royce on TV. It was car lust at first sight. I literally said I'd like to get one of those one day, so when I, when I grow up, I want one. Well, Chuck is definitely grown up, and he has fulfilled a lifelong dream to own the ultimate luxury car. And it wasn't just having a Rolls Royce, by the way. It was a particular Rolls Royce, which was a Rolls Royce with a convertible top. To me, that was going to be the ultimate. For me, it frankly means getting out in the car, having the top down, and just enjoying the heck out of a day. So I look at this as, uh, you know, this was something that was meant to be. It is the best, it is simply the best. Today's Rolls-Royce Phantom is a matchless mixture of a century of British tradition infused with the very best engineering. Its manufacturer requires the skill and precision of hundreds of exceptional craftspeople in three ultimate factories across two countries. Good on the mama, good on the mama.